And welcome everyone, I'm Bill Newell, joined by uh, Dick Newton, Athletic Director at Lynn English High School, and Bill Devon, Athletic Director at Lynn Classical High School. And gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome. Good afternoon, Bill. <laughs> good to see you guys. Yeah, haven't seen, we haven't seen you in a long time, but uh, that's the way that 2020 is. Um, big news uh, for Lynn Athletics with Lynn Classical and Lynn English uh, making a move from the Northeastern Conference to the Greater Boston League. Uh, it was just a few years ago the Greater Boston League came into the Northeastern Conference. They left, including the new teams, but also Revere, who had been a member of the Northeastern Conference. Uh, we can talk more about that in just a moment. Uh, this past week, uh, at the end of the week, the Northeastern Conference voted 12-0 to, to allow uh, you guys to leave, if you will, and go to the GBL. So basically, Dick, it's a done deal. Does that sound about right? It's all done. Yeah, it started with uh, we we con Billy and I both contacted um, the GBL to see if they'd be interested in taking us uh, way back in uh, late August, um, early September, and then we brought it to our principals, who then brought it to our administration, and uh, we needed the approval of the school committee, which they did, and then it went to our uh, league, which um, you know we were curious if they're going to let us out after. Uh, at the end of this year, and we were happy that they did. Bill, your thoughts on uh, on that process? It, it it seemed like a long process um, because it was, you know, it was multi pronged, so to speak. But um, yeah, just to echo what you know, we went, uh, we had a virtual Zoom with the um, school committee and the mayor, Tom McGee, and. Um, this was after the GBL voted six to nothing to accept us. And then we had our school committee meeting and it was overwhelming support from the mayor through the uh, six committee members that this would be a good fit for us uh, going forward. Um, I've said this all along in the newspaper and uh, that, you know, our demographics and our student body diversity and competitive balance. We, we, Dickie and I took a look at all of our sports, you know, and a, and a couple sports, obviously, we're competitive, you know, in basketball and, and some of the other sports. But when you look across the board uh, and you look at our athletic participation rates, which uh, hover around 15 percent, we line up perfectly with the schools in the greater Boston League. So going forward, uh, I, I, I'm excited. You know, sometimes people, you know, I've heard from people that are very excited I, and I hear from other people that are weary of it and, you know, they don't like change. And, um, but I, I feel extremely confident going forward, as does Dick, um, that this is where we should be. Now, now we have eight, eight very strong urban teams. Uh, we're all alike. We can sit in meetings and discuss the same ups and downs that all of the schools have. Um, the proximity of the schools are, are outstanding and the GBL has really strong facilities too. So I, I think it's a win-win, you know. What, whatever you do, Bill, and Dickie will tell you this too, you're, you're always gonna have naysayers, but <laughs> I think we have the pulse of our schools down pretty good and, and we kind of know where we should be as far as competition and, and and where is the city of Lynn going to be in a few years coming up? You know, some sports we might get better at and other sports that we were good at, we're not going to have the, we're not going to have the kids to uh, compete in those certain sports anymore. So, <coughs> was I too long winded there? Boy, you went for a long time, Billy, you know. <laughs> I, I, I just want, wait, I just want, am I going to get my gift card to the Sylvan? <laughs> do, they, do they have like a remote thing for the gift cards? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we have any digital cards here, Bill. You know? I, I think what you, I think what you find though, Bill, is that, is that we didn't get, I, I didn't get much pushback and zero in my school. Um, I think when everything going on, there's, there's so much going on now that's uh, non-athletic related. This was the perfect time for us to do it. Um, our superintendent was 100% on board. And it was, uh, it's, when you look at girls sports in some of our, even, even our, my basketball team, Billy's basketball team is always strong. It, you know, we beat Winthrop 112 to like 10 last year. I mean, it's just, it's, it's not, not good for anybody. And in my softball team that, you know, 
they were going independent. So this way, my softball team, everybody plays in the same Greater Boston League. It'll be, it'll be good for everybody. I yeah, and, and Bill, just so everybody knows, uh, we're certainly not closing the door on the NEC. We would like to remain scheduling partners with them um, going forward in some of our sports. A lot of our coaches at English and Classical have good relationships with coaches in the NEC, and we're going to still have room built into our schedule to have some of these non-league games. And we're still going to have all the Lynn tournaments, uh, the, city tur the city soccer tournament, uh, the volleyball tournament, uh, the Bolverini, baseball, softball. I, I, think, I think that, another all that stuff stays intact. I think another important thing is that um, this, uh, there was rumors out there that this had a lot to do with us not, being, uh, not playing in the fall. In the in this, we voted to have to go to fall two, and then the other schools, the suburban schools like Masco, started it with the school committee saying they had to play, and then all the other schools just dominoed in, and they all played in the fall. It had nothing to do with that. This was in the works long before um, that happened. Were were we both not happy about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that kind of rubbed me the wrong way that they they decided to do that. But there wasn't an AD or a principal thing. That was a community thing for them. So you know, we have to do what we have to do. You know, and, and, you know, you had, I, I think you had Phil Stacy on uh, the last time and, you know, and he was talking about volleyball going to fall too. And then us not wanting to play them in volleyball. That That's really not what happened. What happened was, is that the Danvers athletic director was running around trying to get everybody to play volleyball in fall one. So when Billy and I both saw that happen and we said, well, we're just going to play the greater Boston league in fall too. And we had them put up, put us on their schedule. It wasn't like we were picking and choosing who we wanted to play and who we didn't want to play. So whoever told Phil that was giving them the wrong information, you know, so, you know, that's okay. And we're, we're lucky that the GBL deferred, their fall season to the fall too. Uh, otherwise, Dickie and I would be calling out to Western Mass and some other places looking for <laughs> looking yeah, for games. We were um, fortunate that that happened. Or we'd be playing each other six times. I mean, you know, it's, yeah. just a, it's just not good. I don't know if you guys know that the area code out there is 413 out there in Western <laughs> Mass. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> we know okay. exactly what it is. So let me ask, so when I heard this a while ago, I said, you know, that makes a lot of sense. However, I was a big booster of having the greater Boston League teams come into the Northeastern Conference. But now that you look at the new alignment, you know, it didn't work out, I guess. But you look at the new alignment now and you look at the Northeastern Conference and let, let's actually let, look at it the way it is right now today with, with Lynn and Classical and Lynn English in it. The, the, num the way the schools are, they are really, in a way, so different. You've got Winthrop so small, Swampscott small. You've got Masco coming in, which has – you Dick, you mentioned, or Bill mentioned, 15% participation rates. Masco boosts – boasts, rather. 75. 75% participation rates. And that's great. That's, that's great for that school and that community. Not well, knocking I, it, but it's, it's a different reality than what you guys are working with. Can I yeah. play um, – can I play devil's advocate here? I, I, I told myself I wasn't going to be controversial, but I, but I, I got to say something that, because you brought it up, Bill, so I'm going to, I'm going to uh, chime in. Um, didn't we have that all, didn't we have what I, what I deem a super league? We had eight over here and eight over here and everybody was addressing everybody else's needs. Right. So, I, I'm sitting in my office today, and I still don't know why. I was never, in, in my opinion, I was never given a valid reason why those four schools were voted out. All right, that, that's just my opinion. I, I you know, I, I hear that. Ah, you know, the travel and oh, my budget's gonna go up. We got four more teams. That's a bunch of malarkey. That's not like there was no reason. So here, we're, oh, Everett and football. The eight teams, the people that were, you know, made, made those divisions, never had to come over and play Everett anyway. I said, I'll play Everett. My coach, Brian Vaughn, said he loves going to the GBL. He goes, I hope our first game's against Everett, all right? And we have a young team. He just – he wants the challenge. Up. But, I'm, but I'm just saying, we had, first, we had the eight. We had the eight, and we had the eight. Everybody was happy. So – let me ask you this, and, I, and I'm going to throw this out to any of the other communities that, were, uh, that are watching this. Why is the league still not the way it was, 8-8? Eight eight? 
And I even brought up at the meeting, and Dickie can attest this, I said, can you reconsider here and let the four teams stay in? We were the only team that voted no for Masco to come in, right? You remember when they had a vote? Lynn Classical said, no, not a good fit for us. I would have voted yes for Masco. They could have went to the other division and then just kept the GBL. 17 teams went, like, come on here. So, by the way, just so you know, I don't know if you knew this, um, you know the four GBL schools, Bill, only had one vote the entire two years that they were in the league? They had one vote. So they could never, you know, change policy. Somerville, Malden, Medford, and Everett could only vote once on anything that we brought up. Am I right, Dick? Well, I feel like you're calling me out because I was we were one of the schools that uh, voted them out. <laughs> I, I know, but things, things change. I, I left the door. You know, I'm just saying, though, we – let me let me summarize here. We had eight and eight, and we had this. Per, and the MIA was had. We had what was deemed a super league. We had a super league. Right. We had no problems with skip. We had, we could schedule this. We could schedule that. Think, and all of a sudden, I, it's I, like I think you know, the problem was. I think the problem was is you needed. Um, I believe you needed eight or nine votes. How many votes did they need? Who were the schools that voted? Uh, them out? It was English. The, it was English. Beverly, Danvers, Winthrop, and Marblehead. Marblehead. Those are the five. And, and I can just tell you that my principal, um, he, he liked it the way it was. Um, he liked tradition. He liked the way it was before. And um, there was no convincing. Um, but the minute my principal wasn't not there anymore, Billy and I got together and said, let's just go to the GBO. I mean, it just makes just so much sense. I mean, you know, and I think that those schools, they might not say it, but they don't really like playing the Lins. Um, in, in our league, Northeast Conference. I mean, I, I, they'll say they do, but I really don't think. They, they had no problem letting us go after uh, at the end of this year. So, I, you know, it is what it is. And I think that there's other school, there might be other teams, other schools in, in the league that are probably thinking about it um, because um, some of them don't fit. So, and what I mean by don't fit, it's just, it's when you get into a meeting and they talk and you, you're talking about issues that you know have nothing to do with your kids because your kids are very different in their environment, the way they grow up compared to what their kids are. Uh, and I coached the Marblehead for uh, seven years. I know exactly what goes on. So, and, and I love, I love coaching there, but it's just two different worlds. And we're going into a world where it's exactly like us and that's where we should be. And I'm glad that Billy and I got together and did it. No, I, I, it does. So, Go ahead, Bill. Yeah, you know, you know, Dickie and I always don't get along. You know that, right, Bill? I, you know, I knew that. You know, this, <laughs> this, that was the one big surprise to this whole thing. You know, to be yeah. honest with you. Well, yeah. you know, there comes a time. It, there comes it must a time, have been an though. overwhelming reason to do this then, if for you guys to get together. I think, and in, in, in everybody knows this. In this world, you know, you have to kind of put things aside, and you know. You, you, you say, hey, Billy's a good guy. So, you know, what am I going to be mad forever? I mean, that's kind of foolish. And, you know, you, you, you know, and, and same thing with Billy. Is he going to be mad at me forever? Kind of, that's, we, we both kind of grew up a little and, and, and took this upon ourselves and, 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 and did it, which I'm glad. So, you know, it, it, was, it wasn't Billy and it wasn't me. It was the both of us. And I'm glad we, the both of us could get together and do it. So you got teams like Malden, Medford, Revere, Somerville, Everett Chelsea. in the – Chelsea. Chelsea's in too? Chelsea's yes. in. Oh, yep. okay. There's eight teams right there. Okay, there you go. Okay. So you have eight teams on our side, you know, and GBL, and you got 10 teams in the Northeast Conference. And, you know, that's why it didn't affect anybody. I mean, it, yeah. it, it helped the GBL, but it didn't hurt the Northeast Conference. Um, what will hurt the Northeast Conference is if two more teams decide to leave um, in the next couple of years, which you don't just don't know. Yeah. Um, and then they'll, they can, they'll be looking around picking up teams. I mean, it's just, there's all kinds of rumors going around all the time. Same thing with the GBL. GBL, there's urban schools are always looking to move out of suburban situations to play like schools. And uh, I could think of four or five schools that would fit great with the, uh, with the GBL. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I really enjoyed dealing with some of the uh, uh, GBL ADs and stuff over the last good several guys. years. Great guys, really great good guys. guys. Uh, you know, I was really sad to see – when this all was transpiring a few years ago, Revere exit, because I said, geez, we don't want to lose Revere uh, because they've been 
you know, a great piece to this too. But, but like you said, uh, uh, the city of Revere, their athletics, their high schools kind of more resemble the Lynn classicals and Lynn Englishes than they might. So obviously, I think, the bo- I think the bottom line is it's Billy and, Billy's job and my job to do what's right for the school and for the kids. That's all it is. Not what's right for me. It's not what's right for the principal. It's not what's right for anybody else. It's what's right for the kids in the school for the future. And that's all. That's what we were looking at. We're looking at four or five years down the road. And, you know, we're, we're going to so, be challenged. Uh, and he's right. Like, I, I'm just going to pick one sport out, Bill. And I'm going to give you a glaring example. Because I remember years ago, uh, Dickie Zed, uh, ex girl soccer coach, wrote an article um, about girl soccer. When we had to cross over, all, like, we, we'd send a bus out of here. Not that we had bad teams. We had pretty <coughs> decent teams, but now you're asking us to go up to Masco, to Beverly, to Danvers, and we all know what the end result was going to be before the game. You know, it was the question of whether the score was going to be kept down and whether sportsmanship was going to, you know, you're always going to get sportsmanship from our girls, but we want, we want to be in a league where, where the bus goes out that we know that every game that we play for our girls' soccer team in the GBL, we're going to have a chance. It's not going to be like nine to nothing, 12 to nothing. And I think Ed, did he say like in 10 years, he didn't even score a goal. Imagine yeah. that 10 years. He didn't even score a goal against certain, against schools. Against schools. certain schools. So there's no, there's no balance there, Bill. There's no, you know, like your, your coach gets the schedule before the season. You go, huh, this, 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 you know, it's kind of, it's kind of like what's going on right now with a, uh, poor uh, uh, hockey team, you know, what, what happened to us last year was, you know, we went 0-20 oh, oh and, and then we found out, oh, still going to be, cro-, you know, Dickie and I went and fixed it and say, oh, we don't have to cross over because we were losing every hockey game last year. What was, what was it, Dickie? 10 or 11 goals 10 a game? 11, yeah, 10 or 11 goals a game. And yeah, seventh was, grader in net. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we could stay here all day and go through each sport, but there's certain sports that. And you and and, and you know yeah. your great, your very successful playoff team from a couple of years ago or two or three years ago. Your goaltender hadn't played goal until right. the season began, right? Right, yeah. right. Yeah. But but that was in but that was in a, a, a when we didn't have to cross over back then. Yeah. yeah. So last year the league made us cross over, and <laughs> you saw what happened. I mean, you know. And it's, it's t- it was a tough situation all around. But our coaches and our kids handled it. Our, our lacrosse program is the same way. You know, can you imagine if we ever had to play Beverly and and Peabody Peabody. and all and Masco and lacrosse? My goodness, our kids, our kids at English and classical are taking up lacrosse for the first time when they walk in the door as ninth graders. Never mind See, getting on a never mind getting on a bus and going up to Beverly or but they but the league all we already fixed that a long time ago and we didn't have to cross over for lacrosse but you know once again another good fit for us in the GBL so well you want you want a league to have teams that are mostly similar to one another you know and across sports and that uh, wasn't as much as possible as much as possible right you, you know right. It, it's not going to be possible all that by by definition in athletics it won't be possible but on the other hand, on the flip side of all that, I think there's a many, many schools in the Northeastern Conference will not that will not miss Antonio Anderson and the Lynn English boys basketball team showing up on a Tuesday night or Friday night. You know, once, you know, you know what I'm so, saying. So, so the other side has to play them once a year. That's yeah. you know what I mean. So yeah. I remember when the vote was taken. Oh, and, and and by the way, and that's at all three levels: freshman, yeah. JV, varsity. <laughs> right, Dick. <laughs> Yeah, we beat you guys pretty good in freshman. (laughs) 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 Not always how it used to be. The common number was 100. (laughs) It was 100. 100 for each level, each game. Freshman, you got to get 100. You had to get 100. You got to get 100. They didn't get 100. They had to run. That's according to the (laughs) class. But getting back to the vote, um, when when, when the GBL left us, I remember leaving the room. And I, don't, I think Billy heard what was said. An AD turned to me, who I'm very friendly with, and said, I don't know why you guys did that. Go, you're going to get killed in girl sports in our league now. And I kind of just shrugged and said, okay. And that's, and that's one of the reasons why we are moving. 
is yeah. because even they know the, the you know the ads in our league aren't, aren't stupid. They're, they're pretty astute. They know what's going on. So you know, I don't think it surprised them that that we were leaving. Um, I think it was kind of surprising that they, me and Billy were on the same page talking to each other. <laughs> but but it, it didn't it didn't. So I don't think it surprised them that we actually wanted to leave and and uh, and go there and and as quick as we could. Yeah, I could see you both going to the GBL, but you two working together. You know that that was you're right. Yeah. That was the surprise, right? Yeah, you have to. That's all. <clears throat> hey, um, so we've we've talked about that piece. Uh, let me just ask you, so Lynn is one of these districts that, you know, students are not in school now, you know, they're, they're out. Remote. Re remote learning. Yeah. So when, what, what is the earliest that athletics could resume in the city of Lynn? December 14th. That's the, that's the date the GBL gave us. Um, we had a school committee meeting, uh, for a four hour school committee meeting, and we were the last on the with last on the agenda, which was a killer, and um, I had gotten a call from from the paper saying that the mayor was going to um, cancel winter sports, and which didn't happen. And how did I feel about it? And uh, you know, I I just want to get the kids out in the court, out in the fields. I you know you know get this thing going, and you know the the school the superintendent wants it, the school committee wants it. We're having a, we're being held up a little bit. Um, on, on the on the last end and which is kind of which is kind of tough because you know we really want to get the kids out there yeah you know I think um you know I I you know I mentioned this at the school committee meeting we Dickie and I and Adolf Gracial that's over at Lynn Tech kind of had to sit back and and watch uh this fall as St. Mary's High School which is directly across from City Hall in downtown Lynn was was able to have a semblance of a fall season, uh, soccer, golf, cross country, and uh, I think they even played volleyball, right, Dick? Yes, I think they even played volleyball so in the gym. In the gym, thought was you know this whole thing, and that's been taken care of by the MIA, who's kind of batted it back to the individual communities that are in the red. So my thought was that, and I've talked to all of my winter coaches. So be it, so be it, Bill, that we have to go on the road for all of our games. Our kids and our, uh, and our coaches are okay with that. Like, they just want to have the same opportunity as all of these other schools in the NEC and as St. Mary's in downtown Lynn had uh, with their winter season. Um, and I, and I, I, think it's, I think it's doable, safety precautions, of course, but we at least got to think outside the box and say, you mean to tell me we can't put together an 11 or 12 game schedule for for our kids to uh, to swim and to play hockey and to play basketball? You know, um, each week that goes by, I called Dickie this morning. I said, Dickie, what, like, you know what today's date is, right? We haven't heard uh, of an upcoming meeting or or anything. It's just kind of like we're going like day by day with this thing and uh, other people I feel that are going ahead making plans for their kids and their schools. Yeah. So Did you hear that Bill though? He called me. See that? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. I heard that. That was good. So you guys know each other's numbers now and uh, you yeah. know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's, we just want to be treated the same. We just want to, you know, all the schools in Lynn should be treated the same. And that's, you know, Billy and I have been saying that for, since since the fall started you know i mean when you get into sports like football and that's a little different you got to think about outside the box of how you're going to with the logistics of that but basketball is pretty simple um you know well, we have all you know we get like we were talking this morning i'm like where where are we going to hold tryouts okay so let's let's say for example we are going on but we still have to have a tryout you know we can't obviously do that in our gymnasiums uh, are we going to have sub varsity teams? There's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that need to be figured needs out to go into this, um, and we're and we're ready to do that. We're we're ready. Like okay, let's give us a green light and we'll make this happen. Uh, at the NEC meeting the other day, Bill and Dickie will tell you this. I took a poll of all of the schools. <laughs> Dickie will tell you who didn't respond. All right, and I had a. I had like nine nine schools that said, even though Lynn is in the red, we will still play you 
<laughs> in basketball. Oh, it's so funny. We'll, we'll play you in basketball and hockey. Because I, I know that Dickie will tell you the schools that didn't answer my question. All right. <laughs> But there well, were nine schools, nine schools, and there were actually nine principals. There was on the principals meeting that said, we will play you if, if you can get – if Lynn can take a bus and come up and we'll play you in basketball, we'll play you in hockey. A um, couple people didn't respond. But I'll, I'll leave that up to Dickie's turn. Well, you know, it seems to me this, this whole process, we're, we've been playing this through since, since August – is that to take small steps to get back into the ring, ring get back into the classroom, get back into, onto the athletic fields or whatever. And, you know, some schools were able to do that in the fall and, and now we're getting ready for winter. So at some point, you know, I, you know, I hope Lynn can take that step as well. You know what I mean? Make that. Well, the, well, the schools that were able to, to play in the fall have an advantage over schools that haven't played yet because we still have to get a, gather our kids together. We still have to have tra- – they've already – they've already been organized and they already have physicals passed right. in and we still have a, you know, we have a lot to do. I mean, I haven't, we haven't collected a physical yet. We haven't seen a kid. No. So in order for a kid to play, he's going to come with his physical permission slip, hazing for, I mean, there's a lot to do. Yeah. Still got to check, still got to check grades. There's a lot of, a lot of steps that have to be taken. Yeah. Even this, you... uh, even this thing with, I, I believe, you know, this came up with the school committee, all these kids were, were far short with the flu shot. You know, I think they have until December 31st, or, or is it? But we would have to – we almost basically told the school committee that our kids would have to have a flu shot before or on December 14th. But December 14th, I, I, keep, I keep hearing that date, and I'm like, I just – Yeah. Uh, it's It doesn't make sense. It doesn't – it's <laughs> – I, I thought that everybody was – and the governor and clue was going to take a look at – Let's take a look at this after Christmas, you know, and I, I think if you started, I don't think we're having our first game hockey game till January 9th, our first basketball game until January 11th. And then we have all the way up until February 22nd, there are no state tournaments. So I'm like, that would be for, for Dickie and I, for the Lynn schools, that would be better for us that, you know, we'd start like after Christmas. And that includes, you know, with, with tryouts. With everything. Well, everything. I saw I saw where Essex Tech. I believe I'm right on this. Essex Tech has decided that even though they're in school now on a hybrid model, uh, they will they will go remote for two weeks after Thanksgiving because of the socialization that can happen over the holidays. So, Bill, that takes you. You know, if you know, you won't see. You know, in a theory, you really shouldn't be seeing students anyways for another couple of weeks if that's the case. You know, following that reasoning. You know, whether it's, yeah, we're uh, we're going all the way till February fifth. Yeah. Um, so that's. That brings us right through the second quarter before we even start to look at uh, what the next step is going to be. Well, gentlemen, our time is just about up, but we do have a moment. If you guys want one other final shot from each of you, uh, give us the final uh, word. Just glad you had us on. We can explain, you know, how, how everything took, took place and how everything transpired. And, you know, that it, it had nothing to do with, it had nothing to do with the Northeast Conference. We, we enjoyed our time in the Northeast Conference um, with 50-year members. And, um, you know, it's just something Billy and I had to take a hard look at. And um, we're, we're happy with the decision we made. I, I have a final thought. So momentarily during the school committee meeting, I didn't see I didn't see Dickie's face. Comes to find out his wife was taking out the leave bags. <laughs> and, uh, and she was she was attacked. Almost, was attacked by a raccoon. <laughs> Dickie, Dickie heard. During the school committee meeting, Dickie he heard screaming in front of his house, and he had to run out there. And his wife was a huge wreck. <laughs> That's a true story. <laughs> That's a true story. Well, you wanted you wanted some final thoughts. I thought I'd try yeah, I did. No, I, I did, and that's uh, that's the reality. Uh, I mean, at least that's the least. I mean, there have been better, worse problems on Zooms than that. I'll tell you that. You know, from what make I've sure, heard. Make sure Trish is watching the interview, Dick. I will. <laughs> there they are. Bill Devin, Lynn Classical High School, Dick Newton from Lynn English High School. Guys, great seeing you, and uh, have a great Thanksgiving. Don't forget Thank the you, mail. Bill. You can mail in that Sylvan Street. Th- I'll, I'll go and sit in the tent. <laughs> they have a tent set up over there. I'll go sit in the tent. I'll, I'll bring it over to you on Thanksgiving morning at Manning Field, Billy. Okay. <laughs> right, Thanks. Bill. Thanks Take a care. Lot, Bill. Thank yeah, you. Bill. Bye-bye. Thank you.